everyone, welcome to Hindsight Rewrites, where we dive into some B-movies or lesser known movies, change a little this, change a little that. As always, if you'd like an overview of the criteria I use on these rewrites, I will leave a link to the series intro video uh, in the description, so go check that out, and then uh, come on back. So today we're going to be going into part two for my uh, rewrite of Invasion of the Nylonians, which is my film, uh, my first film that I did. Um, it's more of a kind of revisiting than anything else. I'm not trying to like pad my own uh, ego or anything like that. It's more just uh, revisiting that first film, you know, that would just kind of scrape together, the dip your toe in the water type thing, and just, you know, have some fun with it. Shoulda, coulda, woulda type stuff. So with that, uh, let's get into our part two. So just a quick recap where we left off. We were at the mall where our Maxine character had just um, disappeared or you know, vanished, uh, Ron, when uh, guys uh, contact the alien nylon, they uh, disappear. So we had done that once before in part one with the Sid character, and then it happened right at the end of part one with the Ron character at the mall. From the mall, we dissolve to the next morning at the park, where we get this establishing shot of the area where we last seen Sid and Cammy the night prior. And we hold on that briefly, and then a figure enters the frame. And uh, we don't see the face right away. He's just walking up there, and he's looking at you know the cooler and the, and the chairs all sitting there, and left abandoned. So this turns out to be Sid's twin brother, Larry, who's came to check on him. And when he finds this broken fishing pole, he assumes what's happened is what always happens when Sid loses that catfish, which is he gets plastered and he just starts wandering off, usually somewhere else in the park. So while he's checking the area out, Larry finds a crumpled up receipt near one of the chairs. So he picks it up and decides to give his deputy a call to see if she's seen Sid uh, running around. Uh, like I said, this is kind of a normal thing that he does uh, when he gets frustrated with the catfish. Hey, Larry, how are things looking this morning? Well, it looks like Sid lost the catfish again. Where did you find him this time? I haven't yet, but I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Check it, Sid. I'll meet you there in a minute. Yeah, I'm on it. From there, we dissolve to the hotel room where John is sitting, waiting for his turn in the shower. When Vicky comes out while she's drying her hair, she says, Your turn, dumbass. And he just does a little motion. You know, they're not getting along yet. And he goes to the shower. Shortly after, we get Olivia coming in with a bag uh, with breakfast items in it for the group. And she tells uh, Vicky that she'd like for her to stop calling him a dumbass and just giving him a hard time in general. Olivia also mentions that she knows that the reason that Vicky gave the night before for not doing so well in school and needing the extra credit is not the real reason. This of course catches the attention of John who comes out saying, hey, you know my reason. I want to know yours for real this time. Vicky relents and pulls out her tablet while the other two come over and gather around. Once they're there, Vicky uh, pulls up a movie and begins to play it. Turns out to be this older 50s style uh, movie called Robot Invaders from Beyond. And it's just this black and white campy with you know the cheesiest looking robots and laser effects and you got some soldiers and they're getting shot at by the robot. And it's just this fun little uh, movie, you know, very 50s like uh, that is being played on Vicky's tablet. From the movie, we fade back to the motel room where Vicky begins to explain what that has to do with her uh, failing school. I am completely obsessed with this stuff. And in high school, I could pass all of my classes while still continuing was my obsession, but college, not so much. In a surprise to no one, John begins to laugh hysterically. You actually like that crap? Vicky, of course, gets upset and storms off to the bathroom. While in turn, Olivia, very frustrated at the kids not getting along, just points to John and says, just, just take those cases 
to the car. The keys are there. On his way out, John uh, does one last ha to uh, Vicky, who's still in the bathroom. From there, we dissolve to outside, where John is putting the case into the vehicle. While he's hanging out, waiting for the others, we see someone watching him in a car mirror. And eventually, we do see, first through the mirror, and then just a cut back to normal, uh, with the others showing up. Vicky just walks right past John. Uh, they are nowhere near getting along. And Olivia says, please, please try to get along. And he says, I'll do my best. A frustrated Olivia puts a hand on her head and then goes to get in the car and they take off. Back inside, Glenn, the hotel manager, and Holly, the housekeeper, are having some banter in the hallway back and forth. When are you going to fix the cart? The new one will be here next week. You're just going to have to make do till then. All right. Have a good day, Holly. You too. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. So in the original, I had this little add-in scene where I had the Cami character holding one of the Nylonian packages. Uh, referencing that she was the one that was watching and everything. We already kind of know that or pretty much suspect that. I don't need to explain every everything. Uh, I'm learning that now. So we're going to take that one out and just roll with uh, what happens next. So back inside, Holly is doing her thing when there's a couple knocks on the door. When she goes out to the hallway to check it out, she sees a package of nylons sitting on the floor in the hallway Huh. Cammie must be desperate for business. She picks up the package, takes them back into the room, and tosses them onto the bed while she continues to do her cleaning in the sink area. So here we got our thumb style guy, and that is just to reiterate something from part one, which is where we're going to shy away from using the lightning quite as much, especially when it comes to just the package by itself. We're going to go more towards a audio type cue... Uh, as far as drawing the ladies to the package to put on uh, the alien nylons. Holly goes and she locks the main door of the room and then goes into the bathroom to put on the alien nylons. From a shot of the locked bathroom, we dissolve to Holly who has put the nylons on under uh, her rolled up jeans. She's continuing to try to do her cleaning, but the flashes of pink lightning as well as just the overall sensations from uh, the fabric are taking it. Uh, an effect. So she flops down onto the bed, begins to writhe around a bit, like we saw with Cammie at the park. We get a flash into Holly's mind, where the pink lightning is beginning to take hold there. Then a flash back out, where again she's just writhing around on the bed, overcome with sensations. Then a flash back into her mind, now fully pink, fully taken. Then back out to the bed, where she sits up, her eyes filled with pink. She is now taken. From there we fade to the park where Olivia and the students have arrived. They are greeted by Jenny and Larry as uh, they come up to see what the visitors are uh, doing. Olivia, after introductions, informs them that they're there to fix the weather sensor which went down uh, inexplicably uh, earlier in the week. Larry tells them to uh, disregard if they see a guy running around kind of drunk. Olivia, very confused about this, uh, is let in on what's going on by Jenny, who says, ah, it's just our village idiot. Comically, uh, Vicky points to John. We have one of those, too. 
John just looks super annoyed about the comment while Olivia gives Vicky a bit of a tap. Hey, kind of let's not do that. Then uh, both groups just kind of part ways. Uh, we see uh, Jenny and Vicky kind of share a bit of a glance as they do. And both groups go uh, to do their respective tasks, which is, you know, the weather sensor for the college group. And the rangers are going to continue looking for Sid. While they're looking in uh, one of Sid's fishing places, a little shed, uh, Larry and Jenny talk about the weather sensor. Did you know there was a weather sensor out here? Yeah, but it never breaks. Oh yeah? Yeah. Remember that storm we had last summer? Yep. Well, when I came out to check the damage, I seen that the tree that it was attached to got struck by lightning, but the sensor was still operating. So it's actually quite surprising that they're here uh, having to fix it. When Olivia and the students finally reached the sensor site, John was the first one to find it sitting uh, at the base of the tree. He picks it up. It's a very beat up looking thing. Really? This is what we came out here for? Well, I know it doesn't look like much, but it's never had any issues before. Here, uh, hold it while I check the battery pack. No, no, I gotta go pee. With that, John uh, takes off to go uh, do his business uh, over on one of the trails. Yeah, I found this later on. Probably just a joke. My place is way too fancy for a set. It's probably just random trash. Yeah, you probably I'm gonna go check it out anyway. You want me to come with? No, you keep looking for him here. I'll call her I need help. Once she has the weather sensor plugged into her phone, Olivia is able to do a quick diagnostic and finds out that it malfunctioned due to overheating because it could not identify a specific element that arrived during a sudden power surge. That's quite odd. Why is it odd? The sensor knows every element on Earth. Vicky just smiles. Well. Maybe it's not from Earth. The two are interrupted by John who yells from further up the trail, Hey, you guys gotta come see this! Vicky, again continuing to be uh, sarcastic and a smartass, We don't want to see your junk! Funny, it's not that. Just come on, come see this! So, while Olivia and Vicky go up the trail, If we see anything, I'm cutting it off! As I mentioned in part one, I'm cutting this gas station stuff uh, with Ron and Cammy uh, that was in the original film uh, in favor of some other things. I'm also repurposing uh, the Ron actor into another role. We'll get into that later. But for now, we're cutting this gas station. So from Vicky and Olivia going into the trail, we'll get this establishing. And while we have this establishing of Cammy's house, we will hear the sound of uh, a phone ringing or an incoming video call. Inside, Cammy is on a video call with Maxine, and at this point, she's already found out from Holly that the visitors are there from the college to fix the weather sensor. That sensor can be the key to solving our problem. I want you to go to the motel and with Holly devise a way to make the professor one of us. We could just hold her down and make her put the stockings on. No, I want you to do something similar to like I did with Holly where I just left the package in proximity. From there, the alien energy will do the rest. From there, we dissolve to the park where we see a bunch of scattered remains of the egg on the ground. And around a bunch of the smaller pieces, we see this larger chunk in the middle. After some initial confusion, thinking he brought them there for the upturned picnic table, Olivia becomes very fascinated by the egg remains. Hey, this could be involved with the malfunction of the weather sensor. John is having none of it. No, we are not here to investigate pink metal. But if it has something to do with the sensor, it is part of our investigation. No, we need to just tell the rangers. That's actually a good idea. Vicky, why don't you go get the rangers? 
while John and I look further into this. John is still not really wanting to deal with it, but Olivia informs him, this is directly involved with your extra credit. So if you don't help, you don't get it. From there, we cut to Larry, who's in the neighboring town to follow up the lead of the uh, receipt that he found. Turns out that he got a printout uh, from the security camera, and he's shocked to see Sid and Cammy together at that restaurant the night prior. Since when are they a thing? So John and Olivia back at the park are still taking the samples of the egg remnants and they're just not really talking much to each other, if at all. Olivia finally breaks the ice. So, are you going to break the record? John is quite surprised by this. I didn't think you liked sports. I actually thought you hated them. I don't hate sports. What I hate is when athletes are allowed to slide academically. We cut to the trail where we hear footsteps approaching and it sounds like uh, the person is running. Vicky ends up in frame and the camera will follow her across in a pan. At the end of that pan we see her running into um, Jenny. A quick cut back to John and Olivia shows the professor getting a bit tired from all the activity taking samples and so forth. So John gets up and he puts the picnic table back into its rightful place so that he and the professor can sit down. I am so sorry, are you okay? I'm fine, why are you running? We found something that you and Larry need to see. Uh, Larry's not here right now, but I could take a look at it once you find it. Something straight out of Venus Vixen. You probably don't get that reference. <laughs> Have you seen the sequels? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, once I get drafted, I don't think the classroom stuff's really going to matter. But anything could happen that could jeopardize that. Well, yeah, I know I could get injured. Well, that's one example, but the people that are letting you slide right now are not necessarily going to be the people that are there for you in the future. They're, they're going to move on to the next big thing. John and Olivia's conversation is interrupted by the sounds of talking and giggling from Jenny and Vicky as they're emerging from the trail. They're both discussing that the robot invaders and the Venus Vixens should have a crossover movie. When they get to the table, John lets out a big sigh. Ugh. Now there are two of them. From there, we cut to an establishing of the parking area before we then see Olivia and Vicky and Jenny come around the corner on one side and John kind of coming on the back side there to the vehicle. We cut over to Vicky and Jenny as they're discussing um, how exciting it is to maybe have real uh, genuine aliens uh, among them. Olivia reminds Jenny to make sure that Larry gets the sample that she gave her. She really wants the Rangers to take a look at it. Jenny responds, yeah, no problem, Professor. We then cut to John on the other side of the vehicle. I need a shower, food, and sleep. As John's getting into the vehicle, we hear Olivia slightly off screen tell Vicky it's time to go cut over to Vicky and Jenny as they part ways to give each other a bit of a look and we see Jenny hold up the whole call me sign as she's walking away and then she turns and officially walks away and that dissolves us to an establishing from another area in the park. Having seen the picture from the restaurant Larry has called Cammie to see if she'll admit to being out with Sid. She does admit to it but only to dinner saying that Sid had dropped her off right after dinner so that he could go check his fishing lines. When Larry asks if there's anything else she knows, she doesn't. She's just like, sorry, we had dinner uh, to pay him back for helping me fix my car, and that's it. When they hang up, Larry just sits there and he ponders. She's holding something back. After Larry's phone call, we cut back to the motel room where we hear the door open and close and then see 
Olivia and John and Vicky's right in behind there just off screen enter the room. Olivia is holding the weather sensor along with the larger chunk that they collected at the park of the uh, egg remnant. When she gets to the TV stand, she sees a gift basket that's been left by them from uh, Holly and, as we know, also Maxine. Olivia reads a card aloud to the students that was left with the gift basket. Thank you for staying at the Shadyville Inn. Please enjoy these items. From there, she begins to tell the students what's all in the gift basket. Some summer sausage, some crackers, some cheese, a bit of candy. She also finds some coupons for the local diner, which she takes over to John and asks if he can uh, go and, and get the dinner later. He says, yeah, right after my shower. She then goes back to the gift basket and finds the most odd item. Uh, we've got some nylons. They're, they're a little too pink for me, but... I mean, Vicky, no. you, you look beautiful. No. Yeah. No, thank you. You look great in them. Are you sure? No. <laughs> okay. Ugh. All right. Um, I have thoughts. Maybe we'll challenges. leave them here for the next session. Get those thoughts out of your head before I feed them out. After Vicky beats on the door for a little bit, she goes back to her chair and sits down to wait for her turn in the shower. While doing so, she pulls out her tablet and pulls up her movie once again. We fade into the movie where we see one of the soldiers from the earlier scene has survived the robot attack. He gets up and he finds his friend who was killed and he just mourns over him for a few moments. Then he begins to walk away, you know, really determined to get revenge on the robot. We fade back to the motel room where some time has passed. John is now out getting dinner with the coupons from the gift basket. And Olivia has just got done with her shower as Vicky was just sitting there watching her movie and eventually fell asleep while waiting for her turn. Olivia gently wakes Vicky up and tells her that it's her turn and that there's fresh towels in there and if there's anything else she needs just let her know. As Vicky's getting ready to go in and take her turn in the shower, Olivia goes back over to the TV stand to collect the weather sensor and the shard, the larger shard of the egg, and she takes those back to her bed. While examining the weather sensor and the egg remnant, Olivia begins to hear a soft, distant whisper in her head. Like Holly before her, Olivia has fallen into the nylon's thrall and begins to put them on. While doing so, she's letting out giggle after giggle. Pink is fun. Pink is fun. Repeating the mantra that was in her mind over and over. Eventually, she gets them on and they seem to tighten upon uh, getting them to their full height. Then, the lightning begins. She is driven back onto the bed and just the lightning begins to just overwhelm her with sensations and everything that we've seen with the other ladies. However, Olivia has just enough strength, just enough willpower left to reach and claw over to the nightstand. While fumbling around on the stand, she does push the shard of the egg off of there, but does manage to get a hold of the sensor and gives that a good throw towards the bathroom wall, hoping that Vicky will hear it and come to her aid. As the lightning intensifies, we see a flash, like we saw with Holly, into Olivia's mind, where the pink lightning in there is beginning to take over as well. Then a flash back out to the room where Vicky has heard the thud from the weather sensor and has came out to try to assist Olivia. Having no luck trying to remove or damage the stockings, Vicky sees the egg shard on the ground and being as how it's metal and sharp on the edges, picks it up and to her surprise is able to cut a slit in one of the stockings and that causes a flash. With the nylon now damaged, Vicky is able to pull off one of the stockings and free her professor from its hold. A returning John can do nothing but look on the scene wide-eyed 
and just say what the hell is going on we fade from there to outside Cammy's house where Larry is standing uh, by his vehicle with Jenny inside of it stay here I'm gonna go talk to Cammy she nods and he walks away to go and further uh, probe Cammy about uh, their earlier conversation so here's our thumbs down guy because in the original we had this kind of quasi text message thing you're trying to do on the screen in again in retrospect kind of like with the gas station scene which we cut that scene just entirely but that had one similar with Holly and Cammy so here uh, we had something like that I just don't like how it really turned out so we're just gonna get rid of that and just go with Jenny sitting in the vehicle so we just have Jenny sitting here um, just playing on her phone waiting for Larry to do his thing and while she's doing so she does not notice approaching footsteps on the leaves the footsteps belong to Holly who's slowly approaching the vehicle when Jenny finally realizes someone's there she turns to see a pair of stockings being held in front of her swaying back and forth like a hypnotic watch her eyes follow it again back and forth and back and forth until she finally becomes kinda enthralled by them and reaches out and takes them we dissolve to inside the house where Larry and Cammy are continuing their conversation from the phone earlier. So why couldn't you tell me that on the phone? Would you admit to it a wild freaky night with Sid? I guess not. So he was upstairs sleeping in a, uh, a wild night? Yeah. Hey, you didn't uh, compliment me on my new stockings. They are pretty good. Yeah, I'm giving a prepare to every lady in town. On cue from Cammy's previous line, Holly and Jenny enter. Jenny now fully taken, converted by the alien nylon. Holly walks further off screen to go sit down near where Cammy and Larry are, while Jenny kind of stops and gets a kind of devilish look on her face or devilish smile as she watches on when Larry begins to suffer the same fate as Ron and Sid before him. Larry doesn't seem to notice the ladies enter as he's fully enthralled by the stockings, his hands on there, and we begin to see the lightning, just like it did with the other guys, begin to form around first the area where he's making contact, then it grows and widens to a larger area. Larry gets a brief moment of clarity and tries to pull his hands away, but he can't, and in a quick flash, we see the room fill with white light and pink lightning and after that fades Larry is gone. With her ladies assembled Cammy goes over her plan and gives each of them instructions. Due to the altered nature of my assimilation I am the only one that can produce replication energy therefore our primary goal is to secure a device or create a device that will allow that energy to be stored and become portable so that you and other future converts can take that energy to expand our reach. The college weather sensor could be such a device. Holly, did you and Maxine secure a way for the professor to be converted? Yes, we left a gift basket with the nylons in them. If you were correct about the energy being compelling to anyone that it targets, she should be one of us by now. Very good. Go back to the motel and get her. Jenny, you're to stay here and help me collect and convert every pair of stockings I have in the house. Maxine, I want you to go into town and collect every pair you can find, whether that's at the gas station, the mall, people's houses, don't matter. Just find everything that you can and bring them back here. From there, we fade to under the microscope where Olivia is examining the stocking that was taken off of her earlier. I've never seen anything quite like it. Vicky and John sitting back. Vicky can't help but say, well, yeah, because it's alien. John shakes his head. Yeah, you know. Before they can discuss the matter further, there's a knock at the door, and Olivia goes to see who it is through the peephole. Seeing that it's a woman that's wearing the pink nylons, like the ones that just tried to convert her, Olivia turns away from the people. Oh my god, it's one of them. Quick, I have to put on that other stocking and try to fool her. 
Back in the hallway, Holly continues to knock incessantly, growing more and more impatient as no one is answering. Eventually, she hears the click of the lock, and the door opens. Hi! Hi. You like them? Oh, I love them. They are fabulous. The county wants to talk to you. What are the students doing? You know what? They're just sitting in their beds doing nothing, and they're just playing on their phones. Well, excuse yourself for two hours. We're leaving in ten minutes. Okay. And don't forget the water sensor. I can do that. Thank you. I have to go with her. Are you nuts? You we need to leave. Absolutely. Get in the car and get out of town. We do not know how far this spreads. I mean, by the time cops get here or anybody gets here, we're, we're all going to be exposed. We need to gather intel and, and figure out what's going on. You know, we could just call for help. Shadyville is too small to be appointed. Uh, a sheriff, like, we're routinely covered by county sheriffs, but there's no actual police force here. Yeah, I don't like this at all. I don't like it either. All right. It's it's our best option right now. Uh, if, do, you, do you have any nail polish that I can help prepare these slits? Yeah. And I'll go, and I'll just gather intel, and we'll figure out what we're dealing with. All okay? right? Thank you. Be careful. Okay. After Olivia goes in to change, we dissolve to outside where she's being led to Holly's car. Every few seconds, she looks up towards the motel room window where John is looking down and just watching. Once Holly and Olivia leave, John turns away from the window. Hurry up. What are you doing? We have to follow them before they get too far. As the students leave the motel room, we fade to the doorway at Cammie's house. So in part one, we did some cast shifting, like I do with all these rewrites, uh, with our Ron character. But instead, we had to use a stock Ron for the new um, scene that we were going to put him in. It's because our original Ron actor was, even in the context of this rewrite, not really comfortable uh, with, you know, that new scene and that's totally fine so in the rewrite we would have ended up shifting our Sam actor over to the Ron role that we had at the end of part one where he was with Maxine and he disappeared however unfortunately we lost uh, a very dear friend and our Sam actor Scott this past year so we went with our stock image instead Scott Mission Man from the fade out at the motel, we go to uh, knocks at this door, and Jenny answers. It's Sam from Shadyville Communications, and he's been getting reports of power surges in the area, and he'd like to check out the breaker box and things like that. Jenny, of course, lets him in. Jenny leads Sam off screen, and a few moments later, we begin to see flickers of lightning. Outside, John and Vicky have arrived while John begins to discuss how he'd like them to approach the porch instead of going directly at it. He wants to go around and sneak around the side and then slip up onto the porch. Vicky then looks at him. I didn't really take you for a guy that would want to save anybody from alien pod people. Eh, I need her for my grade. Sure, that's the reason. Whatever, and don't call them pod people. What else are we supposed to call them? I don't know. Okay, they're made out of nylon, right? So let's call them Nylonians. Hmm. Whatever, let's go. When we cut back inside in the original, I had a shot of Olivia going up the stairs. Instead, we're just going to cut to upstairs where Cammie's just got done turning a normal pair of stockings into alien ones. When Olivia enters frame, she looks around for a little bit. Wow, nice little operation you have here. Yeah, little's the operative word, but we're hoping to change that. Oh yeah? What's your goal, the world? That would be nice, but we'll start with the state. Kimmy eyes over the professor a little bit, making us, the audience, not entirely sure whether she's on to a ruse or not. Then she continues. 
That's actually where I could use your help. How much do you know about the sensor? Like the audience, Olivia's not entirely sure whether Cammy is on to her ruse or not, so she shifts a little in her seat and replies, I know everything about the sensor. A quick cut outside shows that John and Vicky have successfully gotten up onto the porch. John keeps watch while Vicky looks into the window. Inside, she sees Holly and to her dismay, Jenny. Oh no. What is it? They... They got Jenny. Upstairs, Olivia is telling Cammie that she can adjust the weather sensor to be the energy storage that they need. She also lets her know that the other sensors scattered across the state can do the same thing if they're able to collect them all. Excellent! Can you do that today? Well, I actually need my laptop and the manual to do the necessary changes and unfortunately I left both of those back at the room. Speaking of which, I probably should be getting back there before the kids start to suspect something. So here's our thumbs down guy again and that's because in the original I had um, the stockings rip when Olivia got up to leave and that's what tipped off Cammy to the ruse. Instead I want Cammy to have been wise to it the entire time. So when Olivia gets up and she takes a step or two to leave Cammy goes, oh, by the way, if you're going to do all this for me with the sensors, you're probably going to need some new nylons. Exposed, Olivia tries to bolt, but Cammy uses the gain strength that she got when vanishing Sid to hold the professor in place and toss her back onto the couch. I'll give you credit, professor. Your little trick worked on the others, but not on me. Don't you want brand new pair of undamaged nylons. Cammy holds up the loose pair of new stockings in front of Olivia like a hypnotic watch just like we've seen with Holly out at the vehicle with Jenny. Similar to Jenny, Olivia can't take her eyes off of them following them back and forth until she finally reaches out and takes them. Outside the students think they have an opening to get into the house but instead are met by Holly and Jenny, who are hiding around the corner. Jenny smiles. Join us, Vicky. Before Vicky can respond, John gets in front of her. If you want her, you're going to have to go through me first. Both students are driven back to the edge of the deck, where John tries to plow his way through the two ladies, but instead is pushed back by Jenny, who has added strength from vanishing Sam. Vicky reaches over and takes John's hand. Um, now really isn't the time for something like that. Clothesline, dumbass. We'll take them together. Oh yeah, right. The students charge forward and the maneuver works as they take down their two opponents. They then run out into the night. What about the professor? We can't help her if we're taken too. Back inside, Jenny and Holly apologize for failing to capture the students. Don't worry, they won't get far. Jenny, use your new skills to cut off communications in Shadyville. Nothing in, nothing out. Using skills acquired from Vanishing Sam, Jenny accesses the Shadyville communications grid, and one by one, all the lights on the grid go away as she follows out Cammy's orders. When the grid is empty, the scene fades to black. In the original, I ended up having to utilize a really cropped in shot for like an establishing to show the students were back at the hotel. And in doing so, I was only able to use this where it showed the shed next door. Here, I pulled back and I was able to utilize a um, superimposed image of the vehicle onto the original image. And that gives us a better establishing of um, the student vehicle or Olivia's vehicle back in the parking lot of the motel. Inside the students have met up with Glenn who is finding it very hard to believe their story. This is crazy. It can't be true. Oh it's true alright. While they're discussing the validity of the student's story we have a quick cut to our grid again but this time we see just two red dots on there and shortly after seeing that we cut back to where Vicky is getting a call on her phone. 
I thought you said your phone was uh, out of service, like the rest of ours. It was. She answers it, and very cautiously, hello? Hello, Vicki. It seems Professor Winters left something at the motel. I'm guessing you need her laptop. Correct. I'm willing to offer a trade for it and the sensor manual. Well, the sensor allows us to target more significant errors. In exchange for the items I require, I'll leave this town and its citizens alone. Well, except for the ones I've already converted. That's a good trade, but I have a counteroffer. You release everyone and go back to space, or I will rally the people of Shadyville to take you down. <laughs> I admire your bravado, but I must insist you take my offer. And if I refuse? It would be a shame if one of my ladies here or your professor were to just disappear as the men tend to be doing. You win. When and where do you want to meet? 8 a.m. tomorrow, City Park. We'll be there. Oh, one more thing. I know about the metal piece that saved Professor Winters. You try any bullshit heroics, I'll... I know. After the phone call ends, Cammie tells Holly to go keep an eye on the motel. From there, we transition back to the motel room, where Vicky is very distraught from what had just transpired. John asks what's wrong, and Vicky relays to him what was in the phone call as far as Cammie wanting the laptop and manual and threatening to vanish the professor and the other ladies if she doesn't get it. That's bullshit. She wouldn't vanish the professor. She needs her for whatever this plan of hers is. Glenn shakes his head. You may be right, kid, but we just can't take that chance. Oh, come on. We have a way to beat him. Look. Do you have more of those? John looks back down at Vicky. Do we? I may have an idea. Vicky gets up and goes over to the chair to retrieve her tablet. She then opens it up and once more goes into her Robot Invaders movie. As Glenn and John come over to watch, we fade into the movie. The clip Vicky is showing them involves a piece of the robot that has been retrieved by the soldier and he is now melting it down and turning it into ammunition. We then cut to a scene where the robot is rampaging and our soldier armed with his new weapon takes aim and fires. The plan works and the robot is defeated. The effectiveness of that shard proves that these nylons can be destroyed just like the robot with their own material. We have a case full of their own material. That may be, but we're not exactly in a position to be making ammunition. We don't need ammunition. Glenn, do you have a sifter and some box cutters floating around? Yeah, I think I got them in the storeroom. Can you go get them, please? Yeah, sure thing. After Glenn leaves, John looks down at Vicky. Okay. If you're thinking what I think you're thinking, that might work, but we still have no way to melt metal, assuming we even could melt it if we wanted to. Vicky gets up, goes to the other area of the room, comes back with a bottle of nail polish. I don't think we need to melt it. I think mixing it will do just fine. Okay, but we're still going to need a hell of a lot more than that bottle. I got a bunch more in my purse which is in the car. Can you go get it? John nods and rushes off to get the polish. Outside, John searches through the car for Vicky's nail polish, unaware that Holly is sneaking up behind him. When reaching the student, Holly puts a hand on his shoulder and turns him around. Unlike the other ladies who have vanished men to gain strength, Holly hasn't done this yet, but finds a way via low blow to get the better of John who's struggling to get away from her. With John reeling from her low blow, Holly places his hand down on her nylons. Relax. 
your strength and skill will go to good use. Vicky and Glenn are working with the polish they do have, and when doing so, Vicky realizes that John should have been back by now. She then rushes out to see what's going on. Unlike the other guys, John has a pretty good idea of what's about to happen to him, and therefore has been able to stave off the vanishing, at least for a while, but he's really fighting a losing battle until Vicky shows up and swoops in with a knife that's been painted with the nail polish and uh, egg remnant mixture and cuts through Holly's nylons. Holly stumbles backwards while John recovers from the close call. Vicky holds up the knife. Hey, it worked! What would you have done if it didn't? Um, sit here and watch as you disappear? Funny. Against the building, Holly is slowly starting to recover from her ordeal. Are you alright? Yeah, I think so. She's still weak, so Vicky and John help her inside. Vicky and John put a recovering Holly onto the bed. She, she's gonna betray you guys. Once Kami gets what she wants, all bets are off. Yeah, we kind of figured as much. Do you know what her plan is? Yeah, she's actually already got enough stockings to convert every lady in Shadyville. Then, she's going to take the sensors and begin expanding. John crosses his arms. We can't let this town fall. Those stockings have to be destroyed. Vicky nods. I agree, but I really don't think we stand a chance against Cammie and her group. You saw how strong they are. We barely got past them the last time. Glenn enters the frame holding a container of sifted egg remnant. Yeah. But now you have a weapon against them, and they're down a member. From there, we dissolve to the park where we see each group enter, starting with the Nylonian group, where Olivia and Jenny are just having all sorts of fun now that they're Nylonian converts. Then we cut over to the other group with Glenn, Holly, and Vicky. Vicky, in one hand, is holding a bag that contains the items that Cammy wants. In the other hand, she's rocking that piece of egg shard that she's been using to great effect thus far. After a couple of hollow pleasantries, Cammy points to Holly. I thought I said no heroics. Well, she came after us. You didn't say we couldn't defend ourselves. Fair enough. Did you bring the items I wanted? They're in here. Oh, where's the boy? This gives us a cut over to Holly. He's recovering. I did a real number on him before they stopped me. Kimmy appears to buy this explanation. Fine. Meet me at the tree. Glenn handles the handoff for our hero group. And at the tree, during the exchange, remember the deal. You take this and leave Shady Bill alone. Fair enough. After the exchange is made, Kimmy appears to walk away, but then turns back and gives a square kick to Glenn's balls in the betrayal that they all seen coming. Cammie's perceived victory is short-lived as she finds nothing but a phone book in the bag. You're not the only one that can double-cross, bitch! An infuriated Cammie orders her ladies to attack. We cut to the house where John is sneaking through the front door on his mission to find the stockings that Holly mentioned. Room by room, John searches the downstairs first. Nothing in the kitchen, Nothing in the living room, nothing in the bedroom downstairs. So he turns his attention to the stairs. They must be up there. Back at City Park, the battle is not going well for our heroes as the recently freed Holly's willpower is no match for the stockings that Olivia is wielding. Overwhelmed with the sensations they cause, she falls to the ground. Cammy bends over Glenn, who's still reeling from the low blow, then looks over at Vicky. Well... Now you're all alone. With the egg shard in one hand and a painted knife in her other, Vicky prepares to face Olivia and Jenny. You fought well, but you can't win. Join us. You don't have to live in a fantasy anymore. This is real and it's wonderful. Vicky looks as if she's contemplating the offers, then raises her weapons. I'm sorry. 
I can't. Back at the house, John ascends the stairs. Upon reaching the top, he sees a few boxes against one of the back walls. Those must be it. He walks over and begins digging through the boxes, hoping to find the stockings and destroy them. Despite a valiant effort, Vicky is unable to overcome the odds and is now being held on her knees by Olivia and Jenny. She struggles to break free but is unable to do so. Then a gloating Cammy walks up. You've lost. This town is mine. A defiant Vicky looks up. That's what you think. I know the boy is at my house looking for those stockings, but he won't find them there. In fact, all he's going to end up finding is a completion to Holly's failure. A deflated Vicky lowers her head in defeat. Back at the house, John pulls up from the boxes. Decoy! Oh no! Before he can run to go warn the others, a hand comes down on his shoulder. You're not going anywhere. Jenny and Olivia are still holding Vicky, but it's not really needed. She is defeated, near motionless, as Cammy gloats. You can find all sorts of things on a Sunday paper. Grocery coupon, hardware ad, or even a free sample from Legacy Lingerie. This gets Vicky to raise her head as Jenny and Olivia giggle in delight. Surrounding the park, the faint sound of light moans and electricity start faintly at first, but then begin to grow. The town is waking up and reading their papers. Back at the house, Maxine has gotten John on the ground and holds up his weapon. It's a cute toy. Too bad you missed. She then drops it to the ground and advances to finish the deed. In one last act of desperation, John reaches and barely is able to grab the knife, then swings for the fences as it were and manages to connect, causing Maxine's nylons to short circuit as we saw with Holly. John wastes no time to see what happens after as he has to get to the park right away. Like the ladies on either side of her, Vicky now finds herself face to face with the stockings as Cammy moves them back and forth. Vicky's eyes follow. You want them, don't you? Vicky sighs, reaches out a hand. Yes. Suddenly, John appears, running like crazy and screaming, Vicky! No! This snaps her out of it, and she takes a swipe at Cammy, missing the first time but connecting the second. John is able to catch her on the rebound. Then they sit back and watch as Cammy's legs spark first, followed by Olivia and Jenny's. The defeated Cammy stumbles onto a bench. Then we see Holly helping up Jenny, and in turn, John and Vicky helping up their professor. You guys did it! I'm so proud of you! They embrace in a hug with the group finally coming together after all their turmoil earlier on. Then we cut over to the Shadyville group, Glenn, Holly, Jenny, as they surround Cammy. Most would expect this to be some sort of confrontation, but instead, she apologizes, and they realize she was just as much a victim as they were, just happened to be the first one, and they embrace. The college group looks on. Well, that's nice. Can we go home now? Olivia nods her head. Yep. Let's go home. Hey, Vicky. Yeah? I have something for you. What's that? Hold out your hand. It's a date! <laughs> with that, Vicky rejoins John and Olivia, and they begin to walk away, with John asking, Can I please have my extra credit now? Vicky and Olivia give him a playful thunk in the head, and we fade to black.
Since this part ran a little longer than I've been usually doing, closer to that half hour, maybe 40 minutes, probably should have shaved a little bit more off and put in part one instead of here. But either way, it's actually kind of fitting that this is going to land closer to the pod people, which is that first rewrite, because the inspiration for this movie is my love that I've had for quite some time for the body snatcher genre, as I mentioned in the pod people rewrite. I've always just enjoyed that that um, premise, and I wanted to put my own little spin on it, and and I think it turned out alright. It's our first little foray, uh, and then we've done creatures since, and we're just learning as we go. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this rewrite. I hope you enjoyed the original film. Please like, comment, subscribe. If you want to shoot us some critique, uh, do this or that, or you know some kind of suggestions that is awesome as well uh, check out the patreon and if you don't that's cool too um, otherwise I will see you all next time on hindsight rewrites